Today, ComfyUI officially announced native support for a new large model, LuminaImage 2.0, which was freshly released just six days ago. The raw image output is not as strong as Flux's, but it is much better than SDXL and others. Moreover, it adheres more closely to prompts, supports a wider range of styles, has lower VRAM requirements, and generates images at lightning speed. It uses the large language model Gemma 2 as its text encoder, which is smarter than T5-XXL, it can follow system instructions, effortlessly assuming the role of an artist, photographer, or even a child who can't hold a pen steadily, to generate images in various styles. The license is Apache 2.0, making it available for commercial use. With such a distinctive model, many of you might be eager to try it out, so I'll demonstrate how to use it. The first step is always to download the model. I recommend downloading the 3-in-1 model assembled by Comfyorg. It's a total of 10 gigabytes in the safest SafeTensors format, so there's no need to download the clip and VAE file separately. Just place it in the model slash checkpoints directory. Next, upgrade ComfyUI by clicking Manager. Although the February 4th version already supported Lumina 2, there have been continual tweaks and bug fixes since then, so it's best to update to the latest version. Once upgraded, you can load the workflow. The native support means you don't need to install any plugins, very convenient indeed. Click Run with the default parameters and ComfyUI's mascot, the fox-eared girl, appears. Please note that the default prompt is different from the labels you might be used to, like those in SD 1.5, or the natural language prompts, as in Flux. As I mentioned in my Alma video, this is actually a format for interacting with a large language model. The first part is the system instruction, and the second part is the user input. This change, brought about by Lumina's intelligent text encoder, allows for a lot of creative tricks, which I'll explain in more detail shortly. First, by simply changing the prompt, and clicking Run, a young lady appears. Compared to the Flux version, her skin looks much less plastic, and her face isn't as stiff. Let's discuss the parameters based on this prompt. The entire workflow is quite simple. The model sampling or flow parameter corresponds to the number of steps. Generally, with step counts ranging from 18 to 40, a suitable shift is roughly between 4 and 6. The default setting is acceptable, but if you feel the details aren't sufficient, just increase the steps and shift. The CFG value can also be adjusted, though if it's set too high, it may lead to overexposure. A range from 3 to 6 works quite well. The default sampling method is the uncommon res underscore multi-step, which is an efficient scheme that combines multi-step and residual correction, its motto being one step of mine equals two of yours. Feel free to experiment with it, though using Euler with a bit more steps, around 30, is also completely fine. Our main focus is on the prompt. I'd like to share a scheme that I've found works well in practice. The first part tells the model to mimic a certain role, in this case, an experienced photographer. The second part describes the visual style, I've chosen a realistic approach. The third part details the content, simply paint a flock of sheep on a hillside. Click Run, and the result is pretty good. Now, change the role to a child who can't hold a pen steadily and switch the style to crayon. Run it again. And you get a completely different effect. Then, try changing the role to a Van Gogh. Style artist and the style to oil painting. As expected, the image is entirely different, with the iconic Van Gogh Starry Night in the background. This model adheres to prompts very strictly. Let's try out the classic test prompt I previously used to evaluate SD3, Flux, and SD3.5. The three pots of flowers render fine, 
and the spatial relationships are correct, but the text doesn't display very well. Increasing the CFG doesn't help much either. Perhaps the artist role isn't well suited for rendering text, so I'll change the role. This time, I define the role as a font designer and pair it with a cute style to create an artistic rendering of the word Mia. This time, it works fine, clearly, the model does understand text. I think this role and style combination is very fun to experiment with. You can let your creativity run wild, using it as a fashion cloth designer, poster designer, or for various other tasks. After all the praise, let's talk about some of the model's shortcomings. I've always felt that it's a bit like SD3 in terms of prompt adherence and text rendering. Its biggest learned flaw is a slight deficiency in human anatomy knowledge, making limbs prone to twisting. I asked the model, acting as a photographer, to paint a realistic style, a lying woman. The first image was fine but the limbs in the subsequent images were incorrect, resulting in an unstable appearance. Compared to the high-quality portraits from Flux, it feels somewhat disconcerting. All right, that concludes today's demonstration. I believe this is a pretty practical and commercially viable basic large model, though its future success will depend on the community's support. I wonder if it might even be more suitable for Pony than SDXL. I'll include the model and the workflow in the description for anyone interested. See you next time.